Yo, what's going on guys? Spessy here. The new Fire Swan decks are feeling incredibly strong. Shout out to Spiro, who I played against. He's done really well with a very similar list and a few little tweaks here and there and still definitely experimenting with it. But it's really strong, definitely worth a try and you're going to enjoy this gameplay, I'm sure. What's changed in Fire Swan? Why has it suddenly gone from being pretty bad to pretty decent? Well, this Sacred Flame card is giving the decks a much needed swarm payoff and swarm support. Previously, it was just boosting in the row but now it's boosting all your fire swarm units by one as well as spawning two zealots a lot of power in this card because we're playing a lot of fire swarm cards obviously we're swarming with fire swarms so this card gets an awful lot of value and um much needed when combined with dsra that means you've got a decent amount of swarm payoff of course this being the echo card if you get the death blow by damaging by three it's going to buff all units if not it's just going to buff fire swarms but if you can get value of this card in a couple of rounds you're looking really nice indeed <clears throat> So Sacred Flame is in the deck. It is a Devotion deck, and there's actually quite a lot of value in Devotion. Um, you get to play Mutants Maker, which is just a really solid card, gets you some coins. And a lot of the time, the issue with this card is it's like, okay, cool, in a Gore deck, you've got these coins. But, you know, like, what are you spending these coins on? Whereas with this deck, there's a very definite, easy way of spending, and that's with Grand Inquisitor Helvid, who is, you're paying to swarm even further, which obviously with your DSRA, as well as your Sacred Flame, it's just a great little combo piece. Added to that, Old Rich, just an amazing devotion payoff. Call it this Fallen Knight, and it's six points. What you can do, you can be a little bit cute and use a leader charge here and there to buff your Fallen Knight up to maybe seven if you're scared of Parasite. Or just if you're scared of Thunders, you could play like a Fallen Knight from hand and buff twice with your leader. You've only got three leader charges though, so having Jack, uh, sorry, having Old Rich buffing up your Fallen Knight to six without using a leader charge, really nice option to have. Jack as well, in round three, absolutely disgracefully good. Because obviously he's a spender now. Great with uh, spending excess coins. But you also get a coin for every Fire Sworn card you play. That includes specials. For some reason, this Sacred Flame doesn't have the Fire Sworn tag, which is a little bit sad. Because uh, it definitely looks like a Fire Sworn card to me. But all the other cards, um, such as Mutants Maker, DS Ray, um, are all um, Fire Sworn cards. And you, if this card is not answered... It gets a lot of points and even if it is answered it's still 12 points right so there's a few considerations obviously collusions a card i've really enjoyed um there's cards like justice you could also do some cool things with igor on fallen knights so we're just going to build the deck and put all the auto includes in first and then look at some of the considerations so bank is definitely a card you're going to want to always include azar is also a very strong consideration because it's swarming it's spawning it's a defender it's just a pretty decent card um in an eight we are, we are going to be playing Furco. Being able to tutor the DSRA is really important. Also, Furco into the DSRA, of course. If you get the um, Death Blow, it's just going to buff him up straight away. So, it sort of works similar to a Trist Talisman. Um, other considerations in an 8. A Senior, uh, very good in this sort of a deck. And also, Lieutenant Von Hurst. In at 7, um, considerations. No auto includes here. Would be maybe Gord, if you want to go down that route. Roderick, Tavern Brawl. Greater Brothers, I would say, are all pretty strong considerations. I have been using uh, Roderick, but I'm not convinced by him. In at 6, Penance is going to be an auto-include. This card is just a 12 for 6, very, very consistently. And I also am just a massive fan of Excommunication. I really, really am. Uh, I think it's just a brilliant card. Helps with your consistency. Of course, in this deck, like getting rid of a Fire Swan isn't ideal because you're taking away points. But when combined with Senior, which... I am leaning towards using. It's a great card. I'm not going to put it in the auto includes, but I'd say almost definitely it is auto. Smuggle is a great card. I think as a one-off, a little bit of profit as well as being a crime card. Other considerations are things like sewer raiders, um, these thinning cards as well as casino bouncers. Also, if you want to play justice, like a crown split of thug, uh, you could try and go down the route of poison potentially. Even like a tax collector it could be half decent. Um, what you are definitely going to include is at least one Cleric of the Flaming Rose. Now, I think there's actually an argument to run two of these if you decide not to run Von Hurst. So let me talk about Von Hurst because this card has a lot of potential in this deck, but I've got a bit of an issue with him. I was using him in my deck today, and he was doing decently when I was going first because I'd be able to use my tactical advantage on him, and he'd tick along. But he's often the third card you play in a round because you need to play like a Mutants Maker, and then maybe I was playing something like... Roderick or like a smuggle to get the horde necessary so he'd be the third card I play and he'd also be reliant on tactical advantage or he just wasn't getting that much value so I'm not convinced he's worth the eight provisions 
A card I do think is worth it, though, is going to be Senior. Um, you don't have to spend with this card, and he just tends to play for some semi-decent value. Also, like, if you're going to use Defender as well, he can just be, like, a win condition on his own. So I think he's a really interesting card. And I really enjoy using Excommunication, which synergizes so brilliant brilliantly with Senior. Because I'm leaning towards at the moment, and I'm sort of making this up as I go along a little bit, I played lots of games in a tournament earlier with this deck with Von Hurst. I'm just going to sort of see. I think because I'm leaning towards not using Von Hurst, I'm going to put in two Cleric of the Flaming Rose because this ability to spend one coin to transform Zealots into um, Footman is amazing against uh, decks like Skelliger with random damage pings where that armor can come in really, really clutch. Especially if there's random damage pings and you've got like a Zealot at one strength, you're spending one coin for two points on one armor. That's pretty outrageously good. Uh, so I'm going to include two of these Flaming Rose. I also really like this Disciple card. Uh, potentially two of these, honestly, because it gives you profit as well as a way of swarming if you want. What's really interesting about this card, though, and I think it probably is worth two of them, is that you can play down a... If you've got this card down on the board and then you play a Fallen Knight, you can then use the spawn and that's going to buff your Fallen Knight out of range of, like, for instance, if you're against Nilfgaard, you might want to play around Tourney Joust without committing leader charges, and that's really important. Um, you're definitely going to be using double congregation. I think you're always going to want a bloody good fun, and um, probably you you might want to consider assaults as well. So there's like a few considerations, right? Like removal is really good. So I was playing something like this earlier. I had um, something like this, and obviously I was using these sort of mid rangey cards like um, Roderick, and I was using uh, Lieutenant Von Hurst as well. And I think I just had one cleric and I had a Zar. So this is what I was playing earlier. I just found like Von Hurst, Roderick, sometimes even a Zar to just not really be worth uh, their provision cost. What you could do is you could go for Justice. Justice is a really reasonable option, I think, in this particular de deck. Um, we don't have a, an abundance of crime cards, but we do have a decent amount. You might decide you want to turn it into a Gord deck, which is somewhat risky, but does have its merits. Another problem with going for Justice is a lot of the time with Furka, you're actually going to want to call in DSRA, and Justice sort of goes away from that. But it does spawn a unit. It's, you know, a, a good early round play. So I think it's a reasonable option. Tavern Brawl is decent as well. Um, I do like Azar. I do like Double Assault and Double Bloody Good Fun. So we could go for one Cleric and a nine, potentially. Um, I think I want to keep Azar because he just works nicely with Senior. And it puts bodies on the board. So we could go for an, a Cleric here. Um, I do think this card's pretty solid if we're not using Von Hurst. And then we've got room for a 10. Where, like, we could go for Justice if we were to rejuggle. We could also try an Igor for just, like, more point potential with Fallen Knight. So you can copy a Fallen Knight. You could also copy Cut Up Lackeys off Senior, which is kind of interesting. You can also actually copy Scarabs. But I'm not convinced that is the way to go, really, with this list. Another thing we might want to consider is trying to fit Collusion in. You guys know me. I love a bit of Collusion action. Uh, we do have three tags in this list with um, Transmitters, Cups, Fire Swarms. So where are we going to go with this one? As I say, I think because I'm not using Von Hurst, I also probably, as I mentioned, do want to use one of these cards. Um, so maybe we ditch. So like, I would say this is what I, I would view as auto-include, these cards, right? I would view this as auto-include. Where do we want to go? Um, I guess you could not run Exco as well, in theory. I think Senior is just good. But again, you could just not run him. This card, if you could get it to work, could be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, and as I say, Von Hurst is a reasonable option. Just wasn't digging him. I think Senior is too good not to use. I also think Excommunication is too good, as well as Azar. Like, I think these cards are just all really good. So what that leaves us is with is 14 provisions. So we could go for Justice plus this, but I'm not sure Justice is really worth it. We don't have an abundance of crime cards. Uh, I think Assault enters the mind as soon as I'm playing Azar. So let's go for an Assault. Honestly, I would kind of like two Assaults if possible, but I think we'll just stick with one Disciple, one Assault. And then let's try Eagle. Let's just give it a spin. I'm not convinced it's the best way to go. Certainly in, t in terms of like a ceiling, it's really good. Uh, like high point potential and let's uh crack on with this fire swan deck hopefully you guys do enjoy like the longer deck building intros i know some of you do um i know probably some people just want to see gameplay but you know they can skip ahead i guess in it so 
I thought it'd be interesting to talk about some of the considerations. Certainly not set in stone. The list I was using earlier was um, Roderick and Von Hurst, as I mentioned, but we basically get Igor instead of those cards, and um, I think it's very reasonable. Like, Igor's not going to be amazing some of the time. He's going to feel pretty lackluster, but I feel like uh, Von Hurst was just getting like removed every single time unless I was going first and I drew him. Um, one thing you can do with Igor as well, if we want to commit him round one, is you can use tactical advantage on Igor, which is pretty interesting, right? To use his insanity twice. Um, so, yeah, five is what he needs for his insanity. Double mutants maker, we've got a cleric, we've got an assault. I think I'm just going to ditch the assault here. Uh, maybe we just ditch Exco. We've got Diazore. Normally you're going to want to play Diazore through Furco, but it's not necessarily true. I think I'm going to ditch the Exco round one. Ditch the assault. And finally, we'll ditch. Maybe just ditch a mutant maker. Let's ditch the disciple. Sod it. So, how do we want to start this on? That is a big question for sure. We could lead in with like an Azar. We could go for, um, for instance, like a Fallen Knight and TA it. I think Azar kind of appeals to me. Maybe it's a little bit too expensive though. Maybe against Pinsir. This is just going to get reset. We don't really want to TA this card, right? Hmm. Hmm. We could just see what happens if we put Igor down, right? I'm not convinced NR's got the best ways of dealing with this card, like six straight up removal. You know, like if they um oil it, we can just use the TA and at least Igor's still just sort of playing as a fallen knight and we put two fallen knights down on the board in one turn, which is really good. So yeah, we can use Igor here. The question is if we use the TA or not, I'm gonna elect not to use it straight away. Because Northern Realms doesn't really have many one damage pings. Obviously Ballista, but I'm not really anticipating a Ballista from our opponent here. And it looks like a Boiling Ore is going to come in on a Fallen Knight. And this is the advantage of playing Igor first, right? We didn't have the Ulrich, but we can now just cycle through Igor again. And also this does count as spawning a unit, of course. It's important to realise, right? So Igor will actually buff our Fallen Knight here. Um... We could go for Cleric here to spawn a unit to buff two more things. Uh, we could also just go for like Furco into uh, Congregation now. We could just try and go like double Mutants Maker and spend the coins of Igor to secure the round. And then start spawning units. I might go for that route. So another thing I used to do with this deck was play a blind, a blind eye apocrythes if you remember with Igor and um, a collusion list, a single blind eye to buff him up. But it's very very draw dependent, and our opponent seems to want to push in, and commit into this round, which maybe just supports. Okay, actually, an archer is one way of dealing with Igor. That's for sure, shutting down our plan. But we still got two fallen knights, which is going to be enough, I think, to just get some pretty good value off of them. Um, let's go for cleric. And we're going to spend with the lad too. Opponent definitely getting a lot of points over time here. But it's not been the most cheap round for them. Assault plus double frigate is no joke, right? And we can just spend like some pretty bad cards here like Congregation. I say bad, but cheap is maybe what the word I'm looking for here. And these Fallen Knights are just going to get... And pretty outrageous value. Also a Zar here would do bits in fairness. A Zar is going to buff each of these Fallen Knights by two points. A Smuggle would buff each of my Fallen Knights by two points as well. So we commit Eagle round one plus a Fallen Knight. It seems pretty reasonable. Definitely need to be careful with this deck with um, Ulrich. 
of making sure you have a card to copy him with. But with this list, fortunately, you've got things like Disciples, uh, Cleric as well. So there's normally some decent things you can do. So opponent just continuing to get more engines up and running. I do think we might just go for a DSRA and get out. Um, try and hold on to our Azar. We're not really doing much with the coins. I guess we could play this and then just spend. It would make it would be like a seven tempo play. Maybe we just do that. We could also bank to try and find like another congregation. I think honestly, just going for um, DSRA here is pretty reasonable. As my pronunciation, probably not very good, but <laughs> uh, do we hit armor of archer? Probably should do. I had the option to spend if I wanted to. I decided not to do it. I kind of lost the opportunity. We'll carry over a coin, I suppose. Maybe should have gone for it because we're not exactly a million miles ahead here. We do get the pass. I'm not investing a lot of engines, but... Obviously, we would have preferred to have won the round. But at the end of the day, we did get an awful lot out of them, really. Um, double Frigate. We've got a Drum. We've got AA. And we didn't really spend anything ourselves, to be completely honest. We spent a Fallen Knight and Eagle, which is a lot. But, you know, I think it was a pretty reasonable round one for us. That like, Eagle in future runs probably just gets clapped anyway, right? So, Assault's probably the card to kick here. This is a nice dry pass card. Uh, senior's pretty good. We probably decide to keep this hand. While there is a lot of good cards still to find, like Jack, like Helvid. Opponent's going to push. This is where like cards like uh, Senior can certainly come in clutch. Now, if we just put Fallen Knight down, it probably dies, right? Probably just dies. Go an Iron Sace. So, might, it might just be in our interest going as our first, then Fallen Knight, then Senior. Let's do this. Let's get ahead. Our opponent's going to be pushing us anyway. And they might just try and greed out a little bit and try and baron this. And then we might catch them off guard with Azar. Then we'll stick Senior in the mix. This is where like holding on to that excommunication round one could have been a nice play to make as well. So yeah, we do get Einsace. This is a downside Senior has as well because he does clash with Penance. Because a lot of the time you're going to transform to Fire Swan cards. Actually, Vigo that comes in, which seems like super late in the round. To try and have a Vigo play. Hi ho, each their own, I suppose. All in the scabs, which again are going to buff Fallen Knight twice. So you can see the beauty of Azar. And then also, you can just see in this situation why Senior is just a pretty solid card to have as well. I wonder if we just be a bit cheeky and transform a Scarab here for more points. I think that's what I'm going to go for. Leave a Fire Sworn to give us a little bit of hope with um, our friend Penance. Might help him out a wee bit. Of course, Defender blocking us from doing much. But it just seems like a really late time to commit. Dandelion, Visigotha, Priscilla. Like, these cards obviously are getting a lot of points, but they could have got an awful lot more points if played earlier on in the game. That's un that's without question, right? So spend that first. Let's find Exco, hopefully. We don't find the Exco, which is a little bit sad. Uh, this is going to shuffle afterwards as well. We could go Ulrich onto Mutant's Maker, but I don't actually have any way of spending in my hand. Jax, obviously, is the big money card. We might just need to play for money. But also, like, playing a crime card is a nice option i think actually i might just go for the congregation because it's gonna mean we get like two four six two four five points extra plus we still spawn fall enough i think it's just a good play here
Gives us penance value. So, looking pretty good, despite our opponent having this massive setup. Not really sure why they decided to go for a short round. But the NR is disgraceful in it, really. These sorts of decks. I'm just not a fan of these sorts of decks. I think they're so... I don't know, maybe disrespectful is the word. <laughs> Fringy. Penance comes in, solid 12 for 6, as you do. Probably going to take both our cards. We might not even have enough, to be completely honest with you. We'll have to see what the last card is. The Baron. Fortunately, we do have this Scarab, which is coming in very, very clutch. We would have been in real trouble otherwise. If it was not for Azar here, it was a free loss. No reset value to be found. Okay, so I play this for... Let's just say I hit the armor as well. So it plays for three. Right? Minus one. It plays for two points. Plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It plays for nine points. So I do need to play both cards. I'm not actually sure we've got enough here, to be honest. Pretty close. I think we might have it by one. If we That's if we hit the armor as well. Which we did hit the armor. We have it by two. Okay, cool. Okay. We've got three good top deck. Jax. Um, we've got... Um, my opponent just had a gold hand there. And we managed to fend them off. Fend them off without even the best hand in the world. Excommunication would have been huge there. We're looking for Jax. Elvide's decent. Can't complain with that. Uh, these two cards are very similar. Jesus. That's something. They have a nine point Helvide. We missed Jax. Ulrich, probably not a bad thing. Would have been a three point card because I'm mulligan this. Fortunately, we can take this out. Definitely didn't top deck like a god, though. Like, we missed a lot of big cards, right? But, like, you need to be super careful with Ulrich as well. Like, my mulligan's there. We should win, right? Fortunately. Um, the removal coming in clutch. Ooh! What a game. What a game. I'm not sure... Our opponent really needed to try and bleed us there, Darude Sandstorm. But we'll take the dub. Uh, let's play another one. This falls decent. I think Igor showed his worth in round one. Do have a lot of coin flow with this deck. My first time playing up against Inspired Zeal this season, but Commander's got a big buff. We're going second this time, so we can afford to play a little bit more slow. We're going to look to do Congregations. Um, I don't mind TAing a Fallen Knight, to be honest. This card's decent. This card's alright. I might just kick this, though. So I decided to kick um, that's a way to just play it through Furco. That is the philosophy behind that one. This is why this card's quite good. You can just put it down, get a couple of coins in the bank. Um, and it's like a hell veed, but you can't use it multiple times. It might get clapped and removed, but it gives us a couple of coins in the bank, which can be useful. Okay. At least we didn't see Vernon Roach. It's definitely a positive. Then we might just transfer him and see what happens if we put a Fallen Knight down here.
certainly don't expect it to survive, but there's no damage pings on the board. Yeah, it's a bit of a yikes. We try again. We play this opponent passes, then we lose four in the nights for the rest of the game. We could just go like cleric, right? I decided to deny tribute as um, we can spend with him later if we want. We try our luck with the Fallen Knight, I think we should probably hold on to it. Transform, the spend here. It's where like a penance would just be like a bit of a winner. This card's also pretty good here too, right? It's a little bit slow, sure. But it does get you points. If Vernon Roach does come in, this is just our pass out. I'm kind of confused as, as to why our opponents played it like this. But I mean, it looks like it could be a siege deck. I could be wrong on that though. Normally you just play Vernon Roach as soon as you have a chance to. Certainly not a flawlessly executed round. I didn't get any carryover. I don't think I really played it particularly well. Penance comes in. This is a nice dry pass card. So we should have looked to have had like a one coin carryover or something, so then we could carry over two coins to the next and final round. Obviously, having an echo card like DSRA, you want to play it in multiple rounds, but really, as long as we don't overswarm, which is pretty easily done with this deck, we should be good. Um Cleric's a pretty nice card to have, I think. Uh what would we rather have? Smuggle or Mutants Maker? Probably the probably the mm -hmm, that's a good question probably the mutants maker find igor and we do find the old rich which is super important for us it's a really important find um Go all rich first. So we could get like Selkirk, Einsaced, something along those lines, right? So you've also got targets for Igor with uh, Orson Senior's cut up lackeys, right? Otherwise, Igor is going to be a pretty lackluster card in this deck. Uh, we could have like led with Igor. Obviously, the fact we don't have a Zar is kind of painful. Maybe you could have even tried to have found Azar. Maybe that was the play. Oh, look at that. So we've got Azar or Ulrich. Both really good cards in this deck. I think Azar might be more important at this moment in time. Hopefully we can find... Mm. Yeah, I think this is fine. Like, we, ha we have an extra coin, right? So, like, Eagle should come in. But, like, having access to multiple... All the knights is going to be pretty huge for us, honestly. So Igor again coming in pretty clutch here. Definitely not drawing ideally, missing out on Jax. I think I playing Ulrich was a mistake. I should have tried to find the Jax or um, Azar straight away. It would have been a pretty big difference maker for us here. Now, what we could do, is if we're feeling a little bit weird, is you can actually Igor the Scarab. But I've decided to use this as insanity and putting 
them at risk rather than spending the coins direct because I can spend coins elsewhere, right? There might be another one damage ping judging by our opponent's deck. But we might get away with it. We still might have access to Jax or potentially Senior as well. The sword comes down on Igor. Pretty outrageous. We'll take that. People are scared of the lad. You can't blame him either. You just, you just cannot blame him. Um, so we could go... Maybe now's just the time to swarm, right? We could also begin to look for Jack with our Exco. Maybe Exco's the play first. We just spend an Exco. Yes, you. Have you made your so this leaves us room for Senior if we find him. Which, unfortunately, it is Senior and not Jax. And um, we'll spend... I think... This is maybe wrong. Seeing as I only actually have access to one crime card. Maybe I should have just held my coins for Hellveed. I think that was probably a wiser play. I should have maybe denied tribute here. So I've certainly not played this game perfectly. I will not deny that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Hellveed the front. It's going to go at the front, all right. The Fallen Knights just keep going. And Igor was pretty important for this as well. To have two stuck down at the same time, right? And as, as was as our. In comes Commando. I guess we hell eat now. So, just to check, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, we're just going to deny tribute on Cleric. Um, we'll spend two coins on Zealots. We'll play Penance in the back row. I guess I'll play Penance first, right? Fire Swarm card as well, so it's going to be buffed, as is old Rich. Unfortunately, of course, Teeny is not. This would have been the card we would have looked for instead. More ideally. But the points we get off this card is pretty disgraceful, really. So we'll play Cleric. We'll not take it, of course. We'll transform twice, and we'll go Sacred Flame. Bang! That's a lot of points. That's a lot of points, man. Draug is coming down, but we do have a big bad boy finisher, even with no Ulrich. We have the Furco into the DSRA finisher. It's beautiful. On the Ballista to buff everything, Senior finally gets some value. Very nice indeed. Those Fallen Knights coming in at 18 and 17 points apiece. Can you guys see the power of the deck yet? I think you might be able to. I think you might be able to. So I'm going to keep playing around with this list, but this particular version seems pretty strong. Big old fan of Igor myself with Fallen Knights. And obviously got backups with the cut-ups. I think Azar is just a must-have. And I think like while you could use cards like Roderick and stuff, I think actually getting the, the Igor in is just a nice alternative. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, if you would like to see more of this deck, let me know. I'm going to try and record a couple of other videos on my day off here. Uh, this is the list again. Obviously, I talked about it for a long time at the start, some of the different considerations. After playing with it, I would say I'm definitely keen to keep playing with this version. I think going for double cleric makes a lot of sense instead of using Von Hurst. Having Von Hurst and a cleric sort of just like nullifies the impact this card has anyway with its feet. So you're just relying on it as a horde. It's awkward to set up and difficult to keep alive, so it's not worth eight provisions. Similarly, Roderick, while he looks a lot like me, um, just feels a little bit like a um, tax collector in this deck and 
yeah like it's better i think to just have like a big high-end gold card that while risky like you can do some really cool things with him and a lot of the time with your fallen knights if you don't have Ulrich, they just feel very tied to your lead ability but when you're playing igor um you can do some cool things with igor for sure big big fan of this card um and yeah i really do like this set i think it's going to be pretty strong this season be interesting to see what tweaks are made but i think this is a really um solid effort and again shout out to spyro uh, for sort of inspiring me to give this another go after seeing the sacred flame in action you just saw right at the end of the video the difference having a card like this can make to your swarm payoff you're not just relying on dsra you've got this as well because this is just a brilliant brilliant card now really really like this deck gonna play some more of it a little bit later but for now I'm going to call it because I want to record a few more videos and get a few more things up for you in my limited time to play the game. Uh, what else would you like to see? I've got an overwhelming hunger deck I could share. I could share some um, hammer dryads. I want to start looking at some Skelliger. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys would like to see. More Swarm, maybe? I could do that too. See you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. Adios.